Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. One of the hardest things we have to do as an investor is deciding when to sell out of one of our assets. Now, this asset could be anything from stocks, property, uh, maybe paintings or art, or maybe um, baseball cards. Who knows? The other thing is trying to decide upon when to sell. It is a hard decision, and it, always in the back of your mind, when you do decide to sell something, you think, is this the right time? And if the price of that asset goes up significantly, you come back and think, oh, that was a mistake. So it is our decision to come up with and or decide upon. And I'm actually grappling with this very decision when it comes to JB Hi-Fi. There are reasons behind why I'm grappling with this, and I'll go to those reasons. And the other thing in the back of my mind as I speak about this is Ausbiz the Court. JB Hi-Fi has been featured about six times in the past two months. And all six times, the experts have come back with a sell recommendation. And the reasons they have come back with a sell recommendation typically revolve around headwinds facing this company because of the cost of living pressures and also valuation. And I won't touch upon the headwinds because that's sort of subjective, but definitely there is an argument. There is, this company is facing some headwinds. But I really want to touch upon valuation. So what I'm going to do in this particular video is try to talk through my decision making when it comes to whether or not I should sell JB Hi-Fi. Now, the first thing I do is discuss my history with this company. It's a long and story history. Well, maybe not long because I'm talking about 12 years. I'll talk about whether or not I think JB Hi-Fi is a high quality company. And the funny thing about high quality companies, there's definitely an argument you should never, ever sell high quality companies. So if I come up with this decision of whether or not JB Hi-Fi is a high quality company, and I think it is, possibly, then this decision should be easy because you should never sell high quality companies. So I'll talk about whether or not I believe this company is a high quality company. And then I'll look at the valuation of this company. And to be honest with you, it all comes back to the valuation. And this will become apparent when I go through this section. So I'll look at valuation via FinChat, and then I'll have a look at some charts. Now, I have looked at some charts when I also talk about valuation, possibly. I say, okay, so let's get stuck into JB Hi-Fi. And now I'll talk about my history first. And in fact, to really discuss my history, I'm going to look at the weekly chart for JB Hi-Fi because... Uh, Looking at a chart, I can actually tell you lots of things. So let's go back in time to 2012. And if we look at the period between 2011 or late 2009 and 2012, you can see the JB Hi-Fi share price fell off like a rock. It fell off a cliff. Share price actually decreased from $23 to $8. So that's a 67% decrease in share price over about a two-year period. And during that period, there was a, quite a bit of fear the JB Hi-Fi was going to be significantly negatively affected by Amazon. And I have no doubt that quite a few of the experts uh, talking about uh, JB Hi-Fi being a sell right now or giving a sell recommendation to JB Hi-Fi probably were giving sell recommendations back in 2011, 2012, when the share price of this company went below 10. Share price right now, $66. Now, Back in 2012, I took a look at this company and JB Hi-Fi was the most shorted stock on the ASX because of those concerns with Amazon. But that didn't deter me. I looked at this company back in 2012 and because I would walk past JB Hi-Fi stores a lot just to garner the activity within these stores, I did the same with Dick Smith uh, electronic stores and there was a stark difference between the amount of customers in JB Hi-Fi versus Dick Smith. And I can't remember exactly when Dick Smith listed on the ASX, but it didn't last long. And it was pretty obvious why it didn't last long. It just couldn't attract customers. But every single time I walked past or went into a JB Hi-Fi store, it was full of people. So I thought the fear about Amazon disrupting uh, JB Hi-Fi was probably stretched a little bit too far. So I took a position in JB Hi-Fi back in 2012 at a share price uh, between 8 and $9. Uh, 
uh, even though it was the most shorted stock. And people actually have been told, telling me, never buy a company if it's the most shorted stock. But I don't listen to that. Anyway, now, in 2013, the company released a few really positive reports. I can't remember exactly what. And that's why the share price actually moved into an uptrend. And you can see this little cross here. This cross is actually a buy signal. And that buy signal was in July 2013. So not much further, longer, or after I bought some shares of this company, but that buy signal was around about $13. So I held JB Hi-Fi for a few years, uh, doubled my money, and then I took profits when the share price got to about $20, something like, I can't remember exactly when I sold. And I have not held or did not hold JB Hi-Fi from when I sold, probably would have been 2015 or 14, until 2022 even though there's not been any sort of buy or sell signal since then. Uh, so the last signal was a buy signal. So the next sell signal has to be a sell signal. So we haven't seen any sell signals since 2013. However, in saying that, I had a look at this company in 2022 because the share price fell significantly in the middle of that year. Remember, that was a time when June 2022, was a really weak month on the ASX. We fell a lot. And JB Hi-Fi fell a lot in that period as well. Share price of JB Hi-Fi went as low as about $37 in June. In fact, my birthday, 14th of June, 2022. And I took a position in September, 2022 at $40. There's a few reasons why I took a position in this company at about $40. The first reason, valuation. I'll talk about that in a second. Second reason is if you have a look at the weekly chart. So we had that buy signal in 2013. Now, whenever the share price of JB Hi-Fi fell below the 200-week moving average, which is the bottom of all these lines, so the colored line, the colored areas here are just uh, moving average ribbons. The bottom one is uh, the green one is uh, the 100, 100 period and 200 period moving average. So that very bottom line, because it's moving up, is a 200 week moving average. And where the share price falls below the 200 week moving average is an opportunity to buy this company for the long term, or maybe just for the medium term, because that's implying that this company is cheap at those levels. That's without even looking at the P ratio of the company. It's only done that since 2013, about five times. 2014, 2019, during the COVID-19 financial panic, and then during uh, 2022, when I took a position. So the share price of this company has gone from $40 when I took a position to $66.11. So that's about a 70% increase in share price in less than two years. Now, there is a reason why the share price has rallied in the past two years. It's not because of financial expansion. It's because of something else which I'll talk about when we discuss the valuation of this company. So that's my history with JB Hi-Fi. I've held this company twice. The first time was back uh, back in 2013, 2014. And now I've held this company between 2022 and 2024. Definitely an argument. I should never have sold this company back in 2014 or so. Should have maintained a position because, yeah, the share price has gone up all the way up to $66. All right, so that's the history with JB Hi-Fi. Now, we talk about, I'm going to talk about uh, whether or not JB Hi-Fi is a high quality coding. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go to FinChart. And I can discuss this, talk about this fairly quickly. Well, I think it's pretty obvious that JB Hi-Fi is a high quality coding. So this discussion could be ended pretty quickly with an argument you should never sell a high quality coding. Because over time, if it is high quality, the share price and valuation should Right, but let's have a look at whether or not this company is high quality. We can discuss this. To the comes come home, cows come home. Okay, the first thing I always look at is uh, whether or not uh, revenue is increasing through time. It is. So we've got the 10-year revenue growth, CAGA, is 10.73% per year. That's in the range I look for. I want to see revenue increasing at least 10% per year. Now, I prefer uh, revenue per share but this is just revenue. And the reason I like to just look at revenue per share is in case the company has done um, uh, capital raising, that sort of thing. Possibly they're doing a share buyback. Anyway, um, so revenue growing at 10.73% per year. Uh, diluted earnings per share growing at 12.94% per year. That's a good sign. Dividend yield of 4.13%. 
and dividend per share has been growing at 13.49% per year. So we are getting all the characteristics of a high quality company. Let's go a little bit further. Let's look at some more important characteristics of high quality companies. Uh, gross margins, 22.37%. I would expect that to be fairly low for this type of company. Now, one of the things I look at when I look at gross margins, so let's have a look at that right now, is whether or not they're increasing or decreasing through time. So let's go back and have a look at the last 10 years of gross profit margin. So 21.7% in 2014. And typically, it's around about 22%. In fact, there's very little fluctuation in the gross profit margin. That's a good sign. It tells us this company has not amazing amount of um, uh, pricing power, but it has enough to maintain gross profit margins. And that's quite important. Now, this type of company, I would not expect to have high gross margins, but that sort of gross margins is enough for this type of company. But the most important thing is return on assets, return on equity, return on capital employed, and return on invested capital. The number I'm looking for there is above at least 10%. Now, the average of this company, five-year average of this company, for those, I'd call them quality metrics, is well above 10. In fact, return on capital employed, 33.63%. Return equity, 33.84%. Return assets, 12.93%. And return invested capital at 19.61%. Again, these are five-year averages. And these are numbers suggesting that JB Hi-Fi indeed is a high-quality company. So then the question becomes, should I even be thinking about selling my position in JB Hi-Fi? That is actually a really good question. Always hold your high-quality companies for the long term. That's a mistake I made back in 2014. So it's a high quality company. That is my decision. Uh, you could think differently, but we are all investors and we're going to have different thoughts about companies. But let's have a look at the valuation of JB Hi-Fi right now. And what I'm going to do is have a look at the historical PE ratios of this company, which is a fairly simple and I think important thing to look at. P ratio of a company, you could look at price to book ratio, you could look at EV to free cash flow. I'm just looking at P ratio, just keep it as simple as possible. So what you do here is you look at a typical range, typical P ratio range of a company. And this is over the last 10 years. Uh, you can see, if you're looking at this, the P ratio very rarely gets above 20. It's been above 20 three times, or maybe twice. Uh, it got Briefly above 20 back in 2016, it touched 20 just before the COVID-19 financial panic and also reached 20 uh, towards the end of 2020. That is telling us that when the P ratio of this company gets probably above 18 is a time, a, you know, time to get a little bit wary, nervous about the valuation of the company. Now, on the flip side, when the P ratio of this company gets below 12, it's time to get excited. In fact, if it gets below 10, it's time to get extremely excited. And the last time I took a position in JB Hi-Fi in September 2022, the main reason I took a position was the valuation. The P ratio of this company went below 8. Yes, it went below 8. Almost the low we have seen. In fact, the low was in October 2022, just after I bought. So just after I bought, the P/E ratio of this company uh, was 7.5. Even during the COVID-19 financial panic, the P/E ratio of this company didn't fall below 10. So that's the main reason I took a position in this company. The other reason was a chart. I saw the share price had moved uh, below that, uh, it was a 200-week moving average, and that was another buy signal for me. But the P/E ratio of this company right now, according to FinChat, is around about 16. Now, some of the experts on Osby's Accor have mentioned the P ratio that by their calculations is about 18. Now, I did my own calculations, looked at the last two half years of profit, and I used that information and the markup of this company, and I calculated the P ratio of this company above 16. Not quite 18, but definitely um, more like 16 than 18. So I'm going to just assume it's 16, but you could be conservative. Go worst case scenario, P ratio of this company is 18. And if it is 18, it is getting the valuation of this company is getting a little bit rich based off historical levels. Not only that, there is that 
those headwinds, those pesky little headwinds facing this company right now. The only thing I want to mention is the P ratio of this company has gone from 7.5, around, we'll say 8 when I bought, to above 16 right now. That means the P ratio has doubled since I bought, so almost two years ago. But the valuation of this company hasn't doubled. So in fact, what's been driving the share price of this company since I bought has been multiple expansion. Or another way to put it, the market is more willing to pay a premium for this company. Not sure what has changed the sentiment in JB Hi-Fi, but the market right now is more willing to pay a premium for this company. So they're willing to pay uh, a P ratio of 16, then eight. Not sure why, but that's the way it goes. And in fact, there has been very little financial expansion since I bought. So in fact, what's been driving the share price of this company higher has been multiple expansion and no financial expansion. In fact, you want a complete opposite. Well, you, you actually, you want both happening at the same time. You want financial expansion and multiple expansion happening at the same time because that really drives the share price higher. But if I had to choose between the two, I would prefer the share price rising because of financial expansion, not multiple expansion. And the complete opposite is happening with JB Hi-Fi right now. So that does concern me a little bit that we've seen uh, multiple expansion. The valuation of this company is getting to lofty heights between 16 and 18, but doesn't mean the share price can't rally from here because the market can remain irrational for longer than you forecast. It can remain irrational for the next two years. And during that two-year period, the company could grow. They could experience a period of financial expansion, which means the financials could uh, catch up to the share price, and the share price doesn't have to fall. So that's another reason maybe not to sell out of my position in this company. So let's have a look at the charts for JB Hi-Fi. We've already looked at uh, the weekly chart here. One of the reasons I bought is the share price moved towards that uh, one or 200 week moving average. Now I'm going to show you the monthly chart first, and this is really important. This is the telltale sign. So I, I talked about the uh, quality status of this company, uh, and I just mentioned looking at return on equity, growth in revenue, earnings per share, dividend, that sort of thing. But you don't have to do all that. Just look at the monthly chart for a company over a 20 year period. And if you see this sort of chart, it's a sign the company is high quality. The share price has gone from the bottom left to the top right. The share price of this uh, particular company, JB Hi-Fi, has gone from $2.50. So when it listed in 2003, the share price was uh, low, had a low of $2. Share price has gone from $2 to $66.11 in 20 years. That is a sign of a high quality company. That is a sign this company is doing well. Now, the one thing I just noted about this particular monthly chart is even though the share price has gone up, it doesn't go up in a straight line. There's a lot of waves in that um, period. So you get, on occasion, the market gets excited about a, a company. You can definitely see that with JB Hi-Fi. Share price goes on a run, a multi-month run. We saw it in 2007, we saw it in 2009, we saw it in 2013, we saw it in 2019, and we have seen it in 2024. Share price has gone on a run. But typically, when the share price of JB Hi-Fi gets well above the 25-week moving average, which is the top line here, except right there, because the 25-week moving average falls below the 50-week. But whenever the share price, or actually month, we're talking about months here, uh, when the share price of JB Hi-Fi gets well above the 25-month moving average, you do see a bit of weakness following that. We saw that in uh, late 2007, late 2009. We also even saw it in late 2013. Ooh, I'm mentioning late here. Late 2016, we also saw it pull back uh, just before COVID-19. So we'll give them a pass there. We also saw it happen briefly uh, in, or just after March 2022. And right now, the share price of JB Hi-Fi is probably more distant from the, the what was it, 25-month moving average than we have seen, maybe, maybe except here. But even here, it was well above the 25-month moving average. Then share price went sideways for about 15 months, for about, yeah, about 15 to 18 months. Uh, and that's the other thing. It, it, just by looking at this, 
there is a reason and an argument the share price should pull back because the share price doesn't remain above this uh, short-term moving average ribbon all that long. Doesn't It always comes back, doesn't it? It always comes back into that area, always. And right now, the share price is 66.11, and the top of that particular moving average ribbon is $52.50. So there is a possibility within the next few months, we might see the share price pull back to the low 50s, or at least maybe the mid 50s. There's always that possibility. But will it happen? That's the big question. So there's definitely arguments for taking profits in this company and arguments against. The arguments against taking profits and selling is this is a high quality company and the share price will continue to go up from here if it remains a high quality company. Now, there are arguments for taking profits. There are some signs here just based off the chart, of the monthly chart. I haven't shown you the daily chart, by the way, just based off the monthly chart. Uh, valuations getting a bit lofty based off history. Not much financial expansion. It's been mostly uh, multiple expansion, which always makes me a little bit nervous. But if you do have a look at the daily chart, there's another possible sell signal just looking at this. So even though the share price just reached an all-time high in the last two training days of the year, and most shareholders right now are in profit because the share price is an all-time high. By the very diff definition of a share price being an all-time high, it means all shareholders are in profit, which actually means that there's less resistance. But in saying that, I do have this dashed line at around about $65. Uh, and that dash line is a resistance line because you can see the share price since February of 2024 has struggled to get above and stay above that particular price. And right now it's above that price, which could mean it's a breakout. But we need confirmation. Uh, if the share price pulls back to below $65, that could be the sell signal because it is looking topish, possibly a triple top or maybe a quadruple top here. And headwinds, valuation uh, are coming together to possibly suggest that JP Hi-Fi is a sell right now. I'd love to hear your opinion, particularly if you are a JB Hi-Fi shareholder. What are you planning to do with your shares? Have you even thought about selling and taking profits in this company? Or if you think this company is a long-term hold, uh, maybe these thoughts haven't come up in your mind. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on JB Hi-Fi. Is it a sell? Is it a hold? Or possibly, is it a buy? So leave your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.